Hello, Merrick. Um, uh, like our great publicist uh, Annie said, uh, my name's Austin from Austin B Media, uh, and um, so your film Silent Love. It's let me go to the Slam Dance page. Uh, it is going to be playing January twenty first and January twenty fifth at the Treasure Mountain in Ballroom. It's a documentary about Milos and, and uh, Aga, um, who, after their mom dies, they're both siblings. Um, it kind of does a deep dive on how uh, the two process their grief and how uh, Aga's relationship with, um, oh gosh, um, I forget her name off the top with of With Maya. Maya. With Maya. Thank you. Um, but yeah, um, thanks so much for taking the time. I, what is it, 6.16 over there? 6, 7 o'clock in Poland? Actually, I, I have just arrived to Salt Lake City, and I'm and I'm in Salt Lake City now, so it's 10.29. <laughs> okay, good. I, 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 I'm glad I didn't catch you at a late hour or anything. Um, uh, hopefully... Hopefully you're keeping warm. Uh, I, I saw uh, Park City temperatures and it was like 30 degrees or something like that. Um, but with that said, um, I'm super excited for people to see your film. Um, so let's just get right into it. Um, so what got you started on the idea to make a documentary about Aga? Yeah, that was... Uh... It was something we talked about uh, with uh, her mother as well uh, while she was still uh, living because my mother she's the friend of the mother of Agnieszka and Miloš and our families know each other so so they would we would talk about uh, making a, a documentary about uh, also about uh, like uh, this was struggling with with cancer with the mother but it would we, we, uh, we, we didn't, um, we weren't able to start it uh, while, she, uh, while she was still um, uh, with us. And, and, and I could, I went there with the camera to Agnieszka and Milos only after uh, her uh, death. And uh, the, the mother wanted me to be there in a way to help them to, 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 know, to know that they have people that can help them if they came up with any troubles. So, so, uh, so, so I was there and I started documenting their lives and um, and, and 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 showing the, the the grief, the process of grieving, and uh, and I wasn't sure what the film will end up being. Uh, and, I, and 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 back then I didn't know anything about Maya and about the relationship of Aga and and uh, and uh, I would just I would just shoot 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 them and 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 and, and then at some point Agnieszka would uh, tell me about uh, about uh, her relationship with uh, Maya and that was a a very a strong moment for me that she confided in me and trusted me and told me about it as I, I was one of the first persons she would tell it to and, and I became the, the someone she could talk about it and and, 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 and uh, that was uh, I felt it it was really important for her and she needed it and uh, and uh, and I would spend a lot of time with them, and uh, and uh, and in the beginning, I thought it was impossible to make a film about it, about uh, about uh, and showing uh, their relationship as they were at. It was a secret relationship, and they wouldn't uh, talk about it or show it uh, to anyone. But as the time passed, as our relationship became stronger and stronger, it occurred that the film cannot be different; that it has to be about that because that was the main issue of the of the of the of them of their family. And and, and I and and we went along with it. And Maya became a part of the family, of course. Yeah, that's interesting that you say that it it kind of began at a different thing you know it i didn't realize work had started before um 
um, Aga's mom had passed away from cancer. Is, um, sorry, what was the question? I got a bit lost. No, I was just making a statement that I didn't realize that this is this documentary work had started all before Aga's mom, I, Aga and Milos's mom. Uh, yeah, we, we talked about it and, and we talked about it and I even remember her, the, the, her, their mother saying, you can always come to our family with the, the camera. We have nothing to hide. I remember her saying, which uh, which occurred <laughs> that it wasn't uh, complete truth, maybe. But uh, but we, yeah, she, she was a lovely woman, and and she really wanted her children to be safe and to be in good hands. Yeah, and I guess on a different topic. Um, the this doesn't feel like a typical documentary you know a typical documentary is somebody asks a question and then the person responds uh kind of like what we're doing right now um but this feels a lot like a lot of the sundance documentaries um that i saw in the last day or two um it feels much more like a drama um so can you talk a bit about how you structured this to make it feel different from other documentaries yeah, somehow I knew I didn't want to it to be like a build on talking heads and and I wanted to be really observative and and in a way to have this dramaturgy of a, of a future film. So uh, so right from the beginning I I, I built it uh, I, I built the, the the way we worked on shooting the film in that way. I was the only person. The one thing was that I was the only person on set because I'm the DOP. Uh, and the director, and I also recorded the sound. I didn't add any additional people to the set to, to really have this intimate situation where I could be build the relation myself and I could be with the camera really close to them and they would act as if I weren't there. And uh, and I would also live with them every time I was there. Even if I wouldn't shoot anything, I would spend uh, a couple of months every year with them as, as they were just my friends. And, and and I didn't treat it only as a film. It was uh, like a, me becoming a part of their family and and, and them accepting me. So uh, so we would have this rule that whenever I was there, I always had the camera nearby. And when I would take the camera on my shoulders, they would act as if I was not there. And then whenever I would take off the camera from my shoulder, we would just talk and and I would help them and we just do everything together. And and we we start we, we we took this rule right from the beginning and and then and, and it and it, it it actually worked very well and they were very disciplined in in this and we liked each other and and then the time we spent this was uh, I mean it was really nice so they really so, so, so it, in a way it went very smoothly and then of course the the I mean. The, 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 the way, the way, the, what makes the film really work in that dramaturgic is the editing, and and that is that was really it took one and a half year of editing, of course not not with some small breaks, and uh, and the editing makes it work in a way, and because I was shooting the film for three and a half years. And and the, in the film, the whole story is condensed into one year, in yeah. order to have this this uh, the right flow and to have this uh, more you know, no more in a way the dynamic story, which is still not really so dynamic, which is a, more of an observational slow cinema, I would say, but it does have this narration of a future film that I think that is really. Uh, we feel that every scene pulls us forward, gives us the, the, the hints of what's happening next, what's happening next. And, and that was really important for me. Yeah. And, you know, you talk about, um, you, you say you filmed this over three to four years um, and worked on it for one and a half, edited for one and a half. And given kind of the things that are happening in the film, which I'll get into uh, a little bit later, um, they'll specifically the LGBT uh, free zones um, that are discussed in the film. Did you find anything you had to kind of rework as a result 
maybe some politics changed during the uh, production of the movie? Really not. The right-wing political scene is still uh, there, and, and it's the strongest in Poland. Then we still have the same president, Andrzej Duda, who's were saying really uh, stupid stuff about LGBT people during his uh, president campaign. He would say that LGBT are not people, it's an ideology. And he would really, they, they, they all use LGBT people as as as, as, as enemies in order to, to gain votes. And it's, uh, and it's uh, really sh sh shameful. And uh, that didn't change. Uh, maybe what changed a bit now is that when we were starting shooting five years ago, that in a way they, their main enemy was gays and lesbians. And now it is more trans people in a way they, they, they put their their cannons more for trans people now at the moment, but still they 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 nothing has really changed. There there we there will be new new election in one year in Poland and we all hope maybe something will happen, but uh, Maybe it is naive to, to think that. I mean, Poland is a conservative country, Catholic country, and uh, they rule now for more than six years and uh, seven years. And, and, and they, they did a lot in the country that is difficult to change now because they took over the whole public TV. They made it a propaganda tube and, and, and they, they changed the educational system in a way that is... Uh, I mean, and then it makes the change more and more difficult. Yeah, and you know, uh, for those who, um, first of all, that's awful. Um, I think that impact is really felt throughout the film. Um, and for those who aren't maybe aware of the situation, uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, what LGBT uh, free zones are? So yeah, that, that was an idea that came up several years ago, and it was uh, it was made by the local government of of different regions. They would uh, they would came up with this free um, free LGBT zones uh, to show that they do not accept LGBT. Some people would even put the stickers on some on some restaurants or some other uh, places and uh, yeah it was uh, no not every region uh, not every region in poland took this law and some of the regions also later um, uh, decided to cancel it because european union said that if you have these laws Every region that took this law will not get any money from the European Union. Some some of the regions uh, cancelled it. Uh, it was a totally ideological law that didn't really have any. Um, it, it it didn't have any uh, legal um, uh, legal grounds. It was only ideological, and and it it did a lot of. Uh, a lot of, uh, I mean, it only erased hatred and it erased the, 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 the way people in Poland divide into two groups, in a way, one of them supporting, one of them fighting, and it's, uh, and it's uh, only making LGBT people really wanting to leave our country, which is, uh, which is terrible. And, and it's just offensive. It's it's a shame. It's a shame to live in a country that does things like that. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and do you think that was something? You know, you talked about the Catholic Church. Um, do you do you think that's where? Not maybe not asking you to speculate, but do you think maybe that's where it started? Because, um, because. You know, in this movie, we uh, um, we see a television broadcast, numerous television broadcasts of these people being interviewed on the street of um, man and a man and a woman is the typical family. 
Um, and even in yeah. um, in Miloš's, um, I I guess dance recital uh, for his School, graduation. Yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah, exactly. There's even that hint of, well, here's the roles that a man and woman is supposed to play. So I I just kind of want to delve d deeper into that. Um, what do you, what do you think about that? Um, well, is that something kind of just brought up by that um, Catholicism and um, just it, 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 it is of, I think it's yeah go ahead uh, yeah I think it's in every in a way it's the traditional roles of a man and a woman which are in in a I think in a way has been constructed in, a, in every country and is uh, and, and 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 that is uh, is a construct that now has lost its meaning in a way and and, and needs to be redefined but uh, but the conservative part of the societies they don't really want it in a way they they are used to it and they um, they feel comfortable in those roles and and they don't want to change them and the, the and and in a way i mean the, the the Catholic Church is the traditional uh, security guy who says, uh, in a way, who says we stick to the traditions, and and, and and that's the way they. I mean, not all of the church, of course. There is some small part of church that is progressive that wants changes, but it's a small part of it. The the majority of it is uh, is. Uh, is, is, is strongly conservative and, and can be very harmful as well. Um, and then the schools in Poland in small villages as well, they, 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 there is a, basically this conservative narration in those schools and and also the, the like the, the the changes that the government made in Poland goes also towards the direction of not letting any foundations enter the schools and, 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 and giving any lectures. So they also want to preserve this conservative way of, 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 teach, of teaching in, in Poland, which makes it more difficult to, for the change to come. It is a, it is a big problem. And, and, and this, uh, but it is, uh, I mean, but the change is, is happening very slowly and gradually and, and in some parts of of, of, the, of, the, of the society and it's, let's hope it's becoming bigger and bigger and it will will happen yeah let's hope um because otherwise that's thousands if not millions of people you know leaving poland for something that's just an opinion that you know something somebody doesn't like you know um and i guess you've talked about an upcoming election in a year um so um i i guess what is your hope for that and what can people um what actions can people take um if any to kind and of what's happening yeah, what's happening now is generally that we have a, the, the, the crisis is becoming bigger and bigger. And usually, yeah, two things usually come up with a crisis. One thing is that usually it's, it's uh, people don't want to have the same party ruling when the crisis comes because they think that the crisis is, I mean, they made the crisis in a way. So that's one thing that gives uh, gives uh, me some hope that maybe uh, there will be a change of uh, a change of parties ruling Poland. But the second thing that usually happens when a crisis comes is that the, the even more right wing uh, parties uh, win, and that's the bit of a uh, of, of fear that maybe on on this. Um, in this uh, of, of this economical crisis that is growing, growing, and growing, even more right wing party would, would, would gain votes. But uh, but there is, I mean, we, uh, the, the crisis makes people uh, want to ha want something new in a way. So I think there is a chance that uh, that something will change next year. 
Yeah, and I guess um, speaking of change, I kind of want to. I kind of want to. Um, um, how are Milos and Aga doing uh, now? I mean, the three of them with Maya, of course, because they live together now. The three of them, so they still live in the same village, in the same uh, house, family house of Aga and Milos, and they are doing really well. They, um, I mean, the the village accepted them. Mm -hmm. uh, they do not confront them with anything, with having to, so, so, and they accept them at, at least as long as they do not show any affection or talk about their relationship. And that's the status quo is still there. So still Agnieszka and Maya, they, they do not show any affection. They do not talk about their relationship. They, they, but they live together and everybody knows they are a couple in the village, but nobody wants to confront them and so this unspoken rule is they're there and but nothing bad happens to them i mean there is no there is no aggression towards them or or, or whatsoever and and agnieszka and maya they want to stay there they uh, they already it's it's like almost five years four years they they live there together and they and they renovated their house they renovated their, their garden and everything and they, they 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 feel it's a place they want to stay milos now after those all of those years starts thinking about maybe traveling or moving abroad or being a he's thinking about being a truck driver maybe and driving around europe or something so he's 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 more into moving mm -hmm. That's good to hear because I think at the end of the documentary, I was like, there was a sense of worry where I was like, is this going to work out? Is this not going to work out? Um, so I just kind of wanted to ask for an update because it, I don't know how long it's been since um, the ending of the movie. Um, but um, but Milos wants to be a truck driver. I would not have thought that um given some of the uh traits he talks talks about in uh silent love because you know he's talking about uh buying a new joystick um for i get i guess it was a game or something like that and i would not have i would not have thought that from Lilosh, um which is interesting um yeah, when we went Milos was 14 when we started uh, the, the documentary and now he's 19 so he's uh, he already has a driving license he has a car and he actually really likes uh, the, the trucks and he also really likes the tractors so he somehow would like to be a driver huh, interesting <laughs> um, another thing I want to ask about Milos uh, you've filmed these um, I don't know what court you would call it um but these kind of courthouse scenes um so i i'd love to learn about that kind of process uh, um that milo shinaga went through um the process of fostering um because um gosh there's just so much i could talk about there but um what, I guess, what did you learn about that process? What did you learn about that fostership process um, that maybe isn't in here, maybe isn't in the documentary? Yeah, it's a... Uh, first thing was that Aga had to go through, both Aga and Milos had to go through several interviews in the courtroom to the judge, and the judge was deciding whether Agnieszka was suitable to be to become the legal guardian of, of Milos and this is in the film I, I managed to get the acceptance from the uh, from the court room to, to shoot it but on, only showing the face of, of Aga and it yeah. was difficult to get the acceptance I was declined several times and I was going back back and then finally they, they let me let me film it uh, and then, and then, and then there is some regular meetings that Agnieszka has to attend. Um, there is some, some also some um, visits of the curator 
to their house and to uh, their friends asking about them. So, uh, so uh, it's a, to, to, to check whether Milos is safe and whether Milos is in a good family and whether it's nothing bad is happening. So, so it seems like the system is uh, working in a way okay because she was given the the, the, the the brother but on the other hand i mean agnieszka was afraid of telling the truth to telling that about her relationship with maya to the uh, court uh, in the court to, to, to the judge and and this is uh, in a way crazy to live in a country in which you cannot say about your relationship in order to get the permission to look after your brother. Uh, and of course, we don't know how the uh, judge and how the court would react on that, because maybe she would still get uh, the, 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 the good the acceptance that the decision uh, that she can become the legal guardian, even if she told about Maya. But that we don't know. But the the fact itself that she was afraid, and afraid of telling about it shows uh, what this system and what the what this country is is, is really about. And it's it's, it's shame, shameful again. It shouldn't be like that. It's and it's causing only stress. It causes uh, it's, it's it's really really. Yeah, difficult, making it difficult for them. Yeah, and on top of that, there's this um, there's this thing you t bring up um, quite a lot throughout the film with the, um, I, I guess, clerk um, of the court, um, where at one point she says, um, and this is not talking about Maya, but Aga, um, where she clarifies you two are siblings yes you are older but um you're something about um not trying to be his mom which i found interesting but yeah i, I can't imagine not telling somebody about a relationship when it, I, it's, uh, it's clear it has such a impact on milos yeah, it's, it, it, it is all, the film is about redefining new roles. And like, uh, like I think that what you're talking is the moment when the judge says that you will never become his actual mother. You will always be his sister. But at the same time, you will play the role of the mother. And, and, and you, I mean, it is, and you will have to adapt to the new situation. And, and all of them has to uh, take on new roles, uh, both Aga, both Maya and Milos. They, they all has to accept new roles and uh, redefine the old ones and uh, and that is what the film is uh, about yeah and i hope um if you're if uh, for those watching later um i hope if you're in park city uh, and either here for Slam Dance or Sundance, you go check it out. Um, like I said earlier, um, Silent Love is screening with actually a short called uh, Fleshwork um, on January twenty on this Saturday, January twenty first at three p.m. at the Treasure Mountain in Ballroom, and January twenty fifth uh, at the Treasure Mountain in Crescent Room at eleven fifteen a.m. And those are both in uh, Mountain Standard Time. So, um, but I have a link to that in the description below. Um, Merrick, thank you so much for your time from uh, for from the uh, what I assume is a busy coffee shop. Yeah, it is. It became very busy now. That's true. Is it loud? No, it's not loud at all. It's it's actually kind of interesting an ambient noise kind of thing. Um, but, um, but thank you so much. I hope you also catch some su Sundance films if you're able. Um, you're only, um, you've got two screenings, so maybe you can catch, um, one I'm interested about would be a uh, cat person. I'm kind of interested in that. I, I think that's with Amelia Jones, uh, at Sundance. Um, okay. but I'd also recommend, I'd also recommend some other docs, um, 
starring Jerry as himself, um, which I just watched this morning, um, and uh, with, um, oh gosh, I forget the name of it, but uh, with Bradley, I believe is the name of the other doc I watched recently. Oh, and uh, Downwind. Um, I've been watching a lot, a lot of documentaries, so uh, check that out after you have the time. I think it's in the same um, Treasure Mountain Inn. Um, uh, I think on the same day, maybe. So maybe it won't work out, but um, let us know if you see anything from either Slam Dance and Sundance. Um, but I'm gonna let you go. Thank you so much for your time. Mm -hmm.